Hi everyone. Well today, like everybody else, is started to roll out the new software update, which is 2022.4.5.5. Now, is it any good? Well, we've got something that we've been asking for for a long time. And I'm going to show you what that is and the implications of having it in your car. And when you switch it on, is it going to be good for you or bad for you? We're going to find all this stuff out. I'm going to look at it right now. Now's back talking Tesla. To see the enhancements made to my Tesla and how to update yours, please subscribe to the channel and you can message me with suggestions or for help. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is look at the uh, release notes for 4.5.5 and we're going to see what we've got. Some things are the same and some things is brand new. What we didn't get and what everybody will be asking me is, did we get FSD beta? No, we didn't. And my car has got FSD and it was one in the UK where we had a choice for £2,700 when we bought the car three years ago. It was, do you want to go FSD or do you not? And I thought, you know what, it's £2,000, shove it in, buy it, put it on the price of the car over three years or four years keeping the car. Who knows, I might get a better car. Well, it isn't here yet in the UK, but that's because of regulators. Not a problem. So let's have a look at the release notes right away. Visual, you hit the little car icon, you go to software, you go along and you look for release notes, or you can use your voice. You can say, open release notes. And one, two, three, four. First thing you see is this seats, which is obviously the view of the camera looking at you from that. And the camera is up here. Let me show you that so you can see where it's hiding behind the mirror. Now, let's see what it tells you about this. So it says, let's have a look. It says, help, stop moving it. Help Tesla improve the intelligence of features that rely on cabin camera. By sharing analytics from your vehicle, when enabled, cabin camera data will be shared with Tesla. If the vehicle experiences a safety critical event like a collision, which is great because if, it if you get a collision, you want to have something backing you up that they don't say the other side when you get the insurance, they'll go to you, eh, he wasn't paying attention, he was on his phone. You go, hang on, uh oh, not true. I was watching the road. It was you, the idiot, didn't do it. Look at my dash cam. You came in to me and look at my eyes. Yes, they're watching the road. Great. So that won't be a problem. Right. So um, the data includes a shoot cabber video clip to help us. So no doubt you could say to Tesla, if there was a problem, can I see that footage? I want it. I want a copy of it to give to the police. Maybe that will be good. Now, um, video clips, such a clear vision avoidance updates as usual. You can adjust your data sharing preferences by tapping the controls, software, data sharing, allow cabin camera. Right, so this is something you have to switch on. So don't panic everyone and say, oh, Tesla's going to be watching me. No, they're not. Only going to watch you if you sign the dotted line. So let's see what the red tape enables us to do. Okay, to get to it, you first hit the little car icon. You go to software. You scroll all the way down to the bottom and it says data sharing. Now in data sharing, it remembered where you last said what you had before. So you had tick there, yes. And you had one at the bottom, yes. We are working hard to improve autonomous safety features and make self-driving a reality for you. You can help Tesla in this effort by sharing diagnostic and usage vehicle data. This data includes a short video clip using the vehicle's external cameras to learn how to recognize things like new lane lines, street signs, traffic light positions. The more the fleet learning of the road conditions we are able to do, the better your Tesla self-driving ability will become. So that itself is something that you don't mind. It's not affecting you inside the car, right? So you can say quite happily, I'll leave that on. Now the middle one is the one that you want to look at. Is Tesla going to spy on us? Well, we're going to find out because they legally have to tell us if we want to go ahead with this. So somewhere along the line, there's going to be a tick box that we need to tick to say we want it on. If it's a privacy that affects you, then don't tick the box. 
but we'll look into it and we're going to dive into the implications and what it means to us to have this in our cars and me personally i would like to have it because i've paid for full self-driving um it's not in this issue we haven't got it we didn't get the button now in canada my lovely cousins in canada you're just waking up to this update and it will have your full self-driving beta button which means you go through the safety test the safety score and all of that and if it's one of you i've done a little video which i shall link up in my description on how you can get your safety score up to get to 100 and then you'll get beta testing very quickly so that video will be in my description so check that out but for those that haven't got it myself included we've got this camera now this camera is the first start in other words, they have to get this through the legislation before we get it into the UK or any other country. You have to agree that before you can actually get it in. If everybody warms to it and everybody goes for it, they go to the regulators and say, look, no one's got a privacy issue with this. Every Tesla owner's got it. They want it. They want it. Let's have it. And the regulators will give it to us. So that's the first stage. So we need to get that done. But let's have a look at the implications and let's see what they're actually talking about with this camera. Continuously improve the intelligence of the features that rely on the cabin camera. Now, this is the one that's really going to get you, right? Because there's going to be people saying, I don't want to be spied on. I don't want the eye in the sky. Elon, I've signed you. If you're watching me, I'm talking about you. Right. So basically, this is the one that if you don't agree to, then don't tick it. I'm not saying you should. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But if you don't want that to be on, and you can buy a little accessory that goes up there and blocks it. So basically, you can turn it off. But what I'm suspecting is that once you agree it and you stop it, eventually it's going to start looking at our eyes and if we're paying attention to the road, which is a good thing because, guess what? Beta testing is going to come to the UK. When it's coming, well, that's a debatable point. But this is the first stage. If they get this into legislation that says, yeah, the guys don't mind if the camera's in our cars, Next stage it'll be, let's have that working to save lives. Good. So let's get on. We digress. So, Tesla, if the vehicle experience is safety critical, in the event of a collision, data may also be shared if cabin camera functionality requires diagnostics to perform. This data includes short cabin camera video clips to help us further develop safety future and software enhancements such as collision avoidance update and more we want to be very clear that the protect your privacy cabin camera data will not be associated with your vehicle identification number twice they've said that right so they're making it clear for safety and security your footage is not going to be linked to your vin so that means that you're, you're a bit off the hook because obviously if you're doing something naughty in the car like kissing the wife or girlfriend who knows what you might doing and this thing picks you up you have an accident and they say oh guess what you were doing in the car we know right so that's it so basically you then have the option do you agree to allow the collect this data and the answer is yes i'm personally a paid fsd i want to be go to the next stage i want to be able to get this stuff going in what's the point of having fsd beta and having fsd if you can't use it and obviously i paid for it so i want it obviously if you haven't paid for it and you're not sure whether you want to choice is yours but all this will help it won't be a hindrance and really what they're going to see me doing picking my nose waving at mrs jones Oi! i mean i'm sure you've all done it hello wave at them and they wave back they don't know you they don't know who you are right okay they go oh we must find out who this person is and then the final thing is the next agreement that says in order for certain features in your vehicle to work such as real-time traffic navigation data for online routing autopilot and summon tesla make use of road segments data reported by your vehicle and we make sure that the data we partners contribute similar data to us that helps provide these services like an analytics to protect your privacy road segment data not linked to your vehicle's identification number they've said it three times it's not linked to your car so it's there but they're not linking it to your vin which they, they could have said they are linking it so that's a good safety position there all information received by tesla will be treated in accordance with tesla's privacy notice which can be found at www.tesla.com about legal so if you're worried go there and look at the details and that 
takes care of everything that is in this update. Now, I know it's not what we expected. It's only a week away from when we last had it. I mean, that's not bad, is it? A week away, but is anything good? Now, one thing there is saying that the nag when you're driving on autopilot is not there so often. I need to try that and test that, but not tested it yet. And it's not coming out in this video. It'll probably come out in another video. I just wanted to get this one out for you so that you know what's coming and what's going. So before we go, let me tell you about one tip that you don't know about. OK, and this will be very helpful. It's to do with your air conditioning and, you know, fiddling with that annoying button to turn it on. You don't need to do that. It's the tip of the day. All you need to do is this. OK, so when you're driving, normally, if you want to get all those graphics up and what's happening to the air conditioning, you have to hit the button and then press it again and it comes up. You don't need to do that. Turn it off. All you can do is anywhere on the panel, you can swipe up and it's there. But it does put the heat, it does put the air con on immediately. You've got your heat seaters there that you can turn them on and off. You can't de-swipe it down and turn it off. You have to manually turn it from there. But that's how easy it is. Swipe anywhere and you're there. I hope this has been very helpful to you. And if it has, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Mal tries at my channel to try and bring you the latest, what's come out, what's going out, anything new, any gadgets I can add to the car that will help you, then that's going to be helpful. I'm looking, still working on the boom box. That's going to be a replacement. There's two boom boxes at the moment. There's one that you can put in sort of front and leave it there, but you have to pay a subscription. No, I don't want to do that. If they decide they don't want to let us use it anymore, they can cut us off and we paid five or six hundred pounds for this item. No, the one I'm going to use is Wasp. And it's brilliant. You can have at least a hundred tunes that you can have. You can have it when you're driving, when you stop driving, if that's coming out. So that I'm working on. We'll have that up and running soon. I've just turned my seat here on. And you know what? It's getting hot in the back of my back. Whoa! <laughs> Terrible. Turn that seat heater off. Quick. Turn off all seat heaters. There you go. Take them all off. Good. Right. Okay. Catch you on the next one. Look forward to seeing you then. Make sure you catch up with me somewhere along the line. I'm always around. And if you need to talk to me in the comments down below, I answer every one of my comments all the time. So don't be, don't be fry. Just have a word. I love chatting to you. Until the next one, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for watching Mal's Back Talking Tesla and don't forget to subscribe. It's free.